Welcome back to News.ph. I'm Beyond Tavares. We have with us here former Mundilupa Congressman and former Customs Commissioner Rufi Biazon. Rufi, you've been very yeah. vocal on social media ever since day one, meaning January 25, when we first found mm -hmm. out about this. Well, I, I was really distressed when I first found out about the news mm -hmm. of 44 of our policemen uh, basically massacred. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in Congress, I focused on uh, defense and security issues. So uh, these topics are really close, mm -hmm. close to my heart. And of course, having grown up uh, as a military brat. Some general. Pong Biazo, Pong some Biazo. general, yeah, <laughs> who just happened to be chief of staff. Yeah, yeah well, um, my, my first concern was how did we uh, plan for this, mm -hmm. uh, which ended up in, in the death of 44. It's, it's a big number. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I know, when uh, military operations and even police operations are planned and conducted, uh, you have a backup of a backup, backup plan. Mm -hmm. So how did it get to the, this point where 44 of our policemen uh, die in a, in, in a cornfield? That's mm -hmm. why I was uh, um, closely monitoring what was going on and uh, the proceedings that, that followed mm -hmm. in finding out uh, what the truth was. Um, wh one glaring thing that really uh, came out uh, to my observation was the, the apparent lack of an exit plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's been <coughs> said that um, the target was worth dying for mm -hmm. 44 men, but the way I see it, it would have been really worth dying for if we gave them a chance to come out alive. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Parang nasayang yung 44, eh, no? na yeah. pina, pinapunta natin doon nang hindi natin nasiguro mm -hmm. na sila okay. yung makakalabas yeah. ng buhay. There, there's one big question, no? D did the military really um, uh, not uh, send in that reinforcement uh, that was you needed? Know, I, I, B because, as they said, kulang ang info at hindi, kum hindi kumpleto, et cetera? Or Want did they hold back for other reasons? I think they, they held back for the right reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. There are protocols mm -hmm. that the military follows before they mm -hmm. uh, engage. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I've been hearing, um, they were indeed following those protocols. Yeah. Um, what we really lacked in was the proper coordination Mm -hmm. We understand that there was no coordination with, of course, with the peace panel because we, mm -hmm. we are not sure yeah. about the leakage of information. Yeah. Probably even with the ground commanders of the AFP. Uh -oh. But uh -oh. for lack of in, uh, coordination at the higher levels where people are supposed to be uh, at the higher level yeah. of security clearance, yeah. that's, that's something that's really questionable. You're, you're talking about the uninformed, the out-of-loopers. Yes, uh, the, sec <laughs> the Secretary of uh, Defense, the Secretary of Interior, the, the, the Chief yeah, of the PNP, OIC yeah. of the PNP. Uh -oh. Well, whose fault is that? Pwede, well, yung dapat kasing nagbigay ng information, no? if, if mm. the plan was hatched at the level of the SAF, mm -hmm. because that's what the SAF commander was saying, that he's yeah. responsible for that. And then they, they could have still done coordination kasi pwede naman lang ginawa is to inform at least uh, at the up, up to the level of General Katapang if they really mm -hmm. don't trust anyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, units could have been placed on red alert mm -hmm. without having to be informed of the details of the operation. Mm -hmm. Just so that in case there's something like this happens, yeah. it's easier to mobilize troops. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Even as simple as the area where the, uh, the SAF operators were yeah. moving, uh -oh. that could have been shared at the higher level of okay. authorities. Okay. Yeah. Rufi, who, sh who should be accountable for this? Well, it would depend now on, well, at, at this point, the way I see it, yeah. everything is falling on the shoulders of General Napenas. Is it really all his fault? It's difficult to believe um, that, that it, everything happened just at, at his level. Yeah. Um, he's a unit commander. There, there are higher ups. Um, and even though there's a, uh, an opinion that the, that sh the principle of chain of command doesn't apply with the PNP. We all know that it does. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the PNP knows, recognizes, and practices the chain of command. Mm -hmm. So um, having a break in that loop uh, yeah. gives us that question that was, gives us that question that uh, was it really worth it mm -hmm. to, okay. to, to have a sacrifice of 44 staff men? Yeah. Okay, so you had uh, Alan Purisima resigning. What should he do next? Well, I, I don't know if he has enough information that he could share with, with the people. Mm -hmm. um, 
Because if we all want, all of these should be justice for the 44. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I, I think all, all of the things yeah. that are happening mm -hmm. now is uh, supposed to give justice to these people, these men mm -hmm. who who gave their lives for the country. Yeah. But the, Never the mind the other side issues. Oh, yeah. But the, the, the reason I brought it up, remember uh, at the Senate here, you know, you advise and not the command. No? And then you have the, the situation where you have the, the suspended and the now resigned chief PNP and the OIC chief PNP. So you have this uh, two uh, fulcrums of power, or for lack of a better word. Um, and then you have uh, President Aquino there, who is the appointing authority. Mm -hmm. who can I, Because while, while Alan Purisima mm -hmm. is there, then there is no other man who can take his position, right? Well, the next best thing for the PNP would be to have a, a permanent, uh, permanent leader uh, mm -hmm. appointed. Mm -hmm. So that would close the gaps in leadership mm -hmm. and uh, accountability would be established. Mm -hmm. Okay, final words, Rufi. Um, just summarize everything. Or what, what, what's well, our I'm, I'm going to comment on the video that you showed. Yeah. Um, you know, it shows the brutality of the enemy. Mm -hmm. But that brutality was brought on by war. They did not wake up one day and just d that morning just decide um, mm -hmm. to shoot some people uh, lying in a cornfield. They, ha they earned that brutality or they, they, they got that brutality from living a war uh, in their daily lives. So that, that video should really be a, a more compelling reason for us to push for peace. Mm -hmm. Because, that, because we don't know what kind of uh, mindset um, these rebels uh, have as they live their lives daily in, in the field. So let's give, give, give peace a chance um, to honor the 44. Um, I would hesitate to call out uh, war against uh, these rebels just mm -hmm. because of the video that we showed. It would, should be even the, in the reverse. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, Rufi Biason. Good you. to see you again. Thank you mm -hmm. for watching and see you again next Wednesday. I'm Dion Tiberos. Good night.